Hi everyone, welcome back to French Connections HTV YouTube channel. Um, today's real French Connection is Carolyn, and she's going to tell us about her journey of moving to France uh, and the services that she's used from H uh, French Connections HCB. Um, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, drop us a little comment below if you've got anything that you want to share, uh, and I hope you enjoy. Morning, Carolyn, how are you doing? Just fine, thank you. How are you, Jen? Good, yeah, very well. Thank you very much. And thanks again for joining us and agreeing to give up some of your time to, to have a little bit of a chat today. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Lovely. So, um, as you know, today's going to be a little bit about us learning about your experience uh, of France, of moving to France, and also uh, sprinkled in with a little bit of your French Connections HCB experience. But first of all, let's go back to the very beginning. Uh, why did you choose France of all the countries in the world to move to? My grandfather was actually born in France, uh, but grew up in America. So I've always had a, a soft spot for France. Um, I was a French colonial reenactor in America and was translating 18th century French cookbooks so the reenactors could eat period correct food. Wow. And uh, when my husband died, I decided that I wanted to have my own little corner of the world. And the amount of money that I had as a widow was not enough to buy um, anything but a junk trailer in America. And then I still would have had lot rent on top of that. Yeah. So I went online and looked for property in France and looked all over the country uh, settled on Cruz, mm -hmm. which is the least populated, excuse me, least mm -hmm. populated uh, department in France. And that appealed to me. Mm -hmm. I was from Boise, Idaho. I had grown there, grown mm -hmm. up there, but all of a sudden there were so many people. It w I just felt choked. Right. So <clears throat> I was able to purchase a property. Uh, it has a south facing stone wall so I can espalier fruit trees, have a marvelous garden. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it here. There is no way I could have had what I have here in America. Brilliant. That's good. That's good for France. Wonderful to have you here. <laughs> and how about your actually journey to moving to France? Um, so you've, you've settled in Cruz, which is yes. the area that you live in. That's the department. So how about your actual journey of moving over? When was that decision taken? Um, I put in an offer on the property the 15th of February of last year, signed the papers on the 5th of Ju July. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow I came across a webinar uh, about Richard and his company, and I had an interview with him mm -hmm. and chose to purchase his whole package to help me move. Mm -hmm. The reason I did that mostly was because my kids thought I was crazy. <laughs> and I did that to prove I knew what I was doing. <laughs> and you can definitely do it on your own. <laughs> yes. And it everything that Richard has provided in his package mm -hmm. takes care of every uh, contingency I've run up against. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I had a problem, all I had to do was call or email, and it was immediately within a day taken mm -hmm. care of. Brilliant. So it was the full moving to France package that you that you booked. Yes. With connections. Yes. Brilliant. Excellent. And was there a specific moment? Because obviously it was a bit of a leap of faith to to buy that sort of service online, isn't it? Uh, or, you know, certainly via a video call, essentially. Was there right. a specific time when you thought, thank goodness for French Connections, HCB and the team? Uh, yes, because they offered uh, the opportunity to help me buy a car they offered the opportunity to purchase insurance mm -hmm. on my behalf so that my visa requirements would be taken care of everything that I had heard was a problem for people mm -hmm. HCB took care of and out of the box it was smooth sailing Brilliant. So you found the whole experience uh, a good one and you'd, you'd, you'd use it again. <laughs> if it absolutely. Be and I would recommend it to absolutely anybody. Mm -hmm. You do not have to be afraid. I'm 75. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, um, <clears throat> I'm not crazy. And it yeah. is 
so comforting to know that there are people who have my best interest at heart, not just taking my money. They definitely earn it, mm -hmm. but they provide a service that just cannot be found anywhere else. That's great. That's good to good to hear. And I'm so pleased that you've managed to find so you've managed to find French connections and the, and the brilliant team that we have over here as well. And um, so what then impressed you most about the service? You obviously said they're, they're there whenever you need them, essentially. Um, the team is always on hand. But what is what has been has there been a moment you thought that they really, really know what they're doing? Um, yes, I had a problem uh getting uh in excuse me electricity and internet um because i didn't have two months worth of utility bills paid in france mm -hmm. i couldn't hook up a telephone i couldn't even go to orange france and hook up the uh service for cell phones so it was um for two months, I was totally without communication, mm -hmm. and I finally um, I decided, you know, I purchased uh, an extra six months of uh, personal contact with HCB, and mm -hmm. so I thought, okay, so I borrowed a girlfriend's phone and got on the internet, reached out to them, and within two weeks, I had power and I had um, my internet. Oh, brilliant. So we got you hooked up in a big yes. way. Yes, <laughs> that's brilliant. That's brilliant. So going back to your actual time in France, um, and I guess there's always that trepidation when we speak to a lot of people that are starting out their journey. They don't know how they're going to integrate into the community. They're not necessarily comfortable with the language, but they know they want to be there. How easy have you found it to integrate? And has there been anyone that's really made your town feel like home? Um, yes, the first week I was here, I came in on a Wednesday morning and on Saturday there was a wedding mm -hmm. and on Monday there was a funeral. And so I actually was able to see the entire village, um, in all of their, uh, celebrations and sympathy. And, uh, there was even a little four-year-old boy who would walk past my door, with a dog on a leash and the dog knew just how fast to walk. Yeah. So he didn't pull the little boy over and yeah. the little boy knew just how tight to hang on to the leash mm -hmm. to walk the dog. And it was so comforting to see uh, children with their parents. And um, there's just something different about Canada, I noticed at first, and then here in France, the children are much more well-behaved. Okay. Uh, there's more uh, community, camaraderie. Everybody's friendly. Uh, it used to be that way in America. It's mm -hmm. not so much that way anymore. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But um, And then I happened to meet the man who had done work on the house prior to me purchasing it. He was from Britain, and so he and his wife and I have become very good friends. And so if I need anything at all, and my French is not up to par, uh, the lady can step in for me and take care of it. Mm -hmm. And I've joined an embroidery community. I mean, it's just this little village of 600 people offers me everything I could possibly want. And if I can't find it here, it's only eight kilometers away to find what else I need. Brilliant. So it's marvelous here. You just feel really well settled. Yes, In absolutely. a relatively short period of time, to be fair. Um, yes, and I think part of it is because I don't have, my expectations are not unreasonable mm -hmm. and I'm not uh, looking for pie in the sky and I'm willing to sit back and wait if things don't go my way. I'm not adverse to sitting and waiting until they do. Mm -hmm. I, I, now that I have internet, I can, you know, learn or whatever, and I can always go to the library and get books. Yeah. So I'm, I'm content. Good. That's really lovely to hear. And patience is a bit of a virtue, isn't it? When you're, when you're moving to a different country, any country, but we know how long things can take. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and how have you found your experience with the French language? You said that it's sometimes not up to par, but then you used to translate French cookery books so how have you your personal sort of French language speaking journey been 
<laughs> well, <clears throat> I'm an old lady. So when I grew up in grammar school, we were taught phonics. And in English, you pronounce every single letter mm -hmm. unless there's a silent E at the end of the word. And it is not that way in French. In French, there could be 15 letters in a word and you only say six of them. <laughs> so it's hard for me having learned language the way I did, mm -hmm. not to try and wrap my English tongue around, or my American tongue around uh, French words. Mm -hmm. That's been the hardest. Mm -hmm. And so I can read French. I don't speak it as well as I read it. Mm -hmm. And so as long as the people will slow down and talk to me slowly, mm -hmm. I can get it. Yeah, we were speaking the other day and I said that we'll have exactly the same thing in our local town. You kind of, they, they speak so quickly because they want to speak with you. And one of my one of my friends always goes, if you, if you slow down, she'll be fine. She'll get it. And I get enough words to put it together to formulate some answer. But I know, right. exactly, I know exactly what you mean. And especially when you get into regional languages as well. Uh, yes. regional accents and I think that's another thing that might not be that apparent to people is that there are regional differences in how we speak the words uh they, they just are like any country um yes the same thing in France so maybe what you're hearing in one teacher isn't how you then hear it in your local town or your local village so that's quite a, a thing to get your head around isn't it yes it is so what's the name of your actual town where you are Clunia. In your local town of Clunia, um, do you have a favourite spot where you would always take people or you're, you feel you're most comfortable? They provide the best food. Is it a restaurant or a bar or is there just a little a lake or a beach or anything that you love to go to? There is a local, um, I guess you would, well, it's called the Tabac, mm. but uh, they actually serve beer and hamburgers and uh, pastries. The woman who owns it, her husband lives in Paris during the week. And is a chef and he comes down and bakes um, all of the things that she needs for the the premises for the week. And uh, you can go and have a coffee. You can sit out on the terrace and it's just it's absolutely lovely and laid back, just like all of the pictures that you see of cafes in Paris where people are just sitting there drinking their coffee and whatever. Uh, it's like that here too, even though it's such a small place. Mm -hmm. And am I right in thinking your your home that you purchased, um, it's needed a bit of work doing on it? Oh my, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Talk yes, to yes, about yes. that challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, again, because I'm willing to just wait until things get done, uh, and and also having been a colonial reenactor and knowing how to cook in a fireplace, knowing how to haul water, mm. uh, all of that has stood me in good stead because I can I can survive. People comment to me that they can't see how I do it, and I go, "You don't understand. This is like a challenge. This is like a uh, I can do this kind of thing." Mm -hmm. I love it. And the more, almost the more, got to be careful how I say this so I don't jinx myself, <laughs> yeah. almost the more problems that occur that I'm able to successfully wade through mm -hmm. makes me even more glad that I moved here and more tenacious about not ever leaving. Yeah, I mean, they're going to find me dead after puttering in the garden. <laughs> I mean, I, I love it here. Hell of a way to go. Hell of a way to go. <laughs> yes. And you've mentioned about, was it Idaho that was home before? Yes. What has been the most refreshing change from Idaho to where you are now? Actually, in Idaho, uh, it's quite dry. Where I was from, it was 2,300 feet high. Mm. So it was high mountain desert and dry, but beautiful blue skies, uh, clear air but dry. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, when the sun is shining, it's absolutely gorgeous, but it's moist. It's um, almost like living by the coast, mm -hmm. but it is uh, definitely a different climate. I'm not very, I'm not as high here as I was in Idaho, mm -hmm. but it is, um, I don't, 
I'm just glad that there aren't so many people in Idaho that uh, in Boise in the Valley, there were so many people moving in. There just wasn't room for right. people anymore. All the farmland was gone. It had housing developments on it. Mm-hmm. It was just not um, what I grew up Right, driving eight miles to the grocery store or eight kilometers to the grocery store here. It's like uh, when I was a kid, I mean, yeah. it is just uh roly poly Hills and, mm-hmm bucolic cows out in the pasture which Mm -hmm. doesn't occur in idaho they're in cement barns chained Mm -hmm. in a stall until they die i mean it's totally different here right old-fashioned the way than the way it was in idaho Mm. a few people have said that to me actually recently is that um the it it's almost a a little bit of a simpler way of life almost absolutely However, you're still incredibly well connected. You know, it's still it's still Northern Europe. You can get everywhere you want to. And have you taken the opportunity to travel around France since you've been here as well? I have. I've been up to Chartres. I've been to Poitiers. Um, I haven't been south. Okay. I've been uh, east to uh, clermont Ferro. Mm-hmm. Um I would like to go to the coast. I would like to see Nil Rochelle. Mm-hmm. But I... Uh, no, I haven't done as much traveling, mm-hmm. but probably later in the summer I will. Yeah, for sure. And it's so easy to get around. I think that's the other yes, thing. Well, it is. People start to, if people have never been to France before and they're used to the big highways in the US or the big motorways in the UK and, and various other countries around the world, um, and it's very congested everywhere you go. And the, the sheer difference of just being able to drive somewhere and not get stuck in a traffic jam is a real joy. You can really get about. Yes, you can. And when I left, uh, when I flew into Orly uh, in Paris and drove south, um, it was easy. It was a piece of cake. The roads were almost better than America. Mm -hmm. Um, There were tolls on the highway, which I wasn't used to, but that's not a problem. It was, um, although there are little country lanes that you can really get lost on if you don't know where you're going sure. in France. Thank yeah. goodness for GPS. Yeah, but, I hundred percent uh, agree. <laughs> <laughs> but it is easy to go. And one of the cool things about HCB is one of the part of the packages is they will purchase a car for you. Mm-hmm. And the car that they bought for me uh, was a Renault uh, Kangoo, and it's what the postal service around here drives. Mm-hmm. And I have had absolutely no problems with it. It just drives beautiful and it takes me everywhere I want to go. And I am just really happy to be able at 75 to go out and get in my car, turn on the key and it starts and I can just go Super reliable. and make sure I can come back to it's great. So tell me about that process then of, of buying a car with French Connections HGB. How did that work for you? Oh, boy, I'll have to remember. Um, <laughs> I... Told I was look, originally looking for a Citroen van mm-hmm. and um, uh, a Berlingo, I think. Mm-hmm. And they weren't able to find that, but they offered the uh, Renault Kangoo in exchange uh, as a possible alternative. And when I went online and looked at what they were, I thought, yes, that would you know suit my needs well. Um, I would in Idaho, I had a pickup four-wheel drive pickup. So, I mean, I could go anywhere and I did go anywhere. So here I wasn't really looking to be so adventurous, but I was looking to be able to buy uh, some bags of manure or uh, garden soil or some cement patio stones and be able to haul them myself, not have to pay somebody to do it. Therefore, I chose the Kangoo van. And, um, I was able to choose the color. I mean, I was offered, a, you know, several color choices. Um, I told them how much I wanted to pay and they were able to buy me what I wanted without, they didn't try to upsell me. I mean, it was, I told them <laughs> what I wanted. They provided what I wanted. Yeah, great. Superb. And then it was very easy to then go and pick up the vehicle or did you have it delivered? It was delivered to me at the airport. I got in the car and drove home. I mean, it was piece of cake. As I say, it was, I am absolutely, it's like a hot knife and butter. I mean, HCB is able to provide whatever you need. And like I said, I'm 75 and I, most old ladies, some old ladies 
would be a scared to death to do this. Some of my younger friends mm -hmm. can't imagine doing what I've done. Mm -hmm. And it's been easy because I had help and mm -hmm. I knew I could rely on mm -hmm. everything that I needed through them. Mm, brilliant. And remind me how you found French Connections HCB in the first place. I, Human it was somehow uh, it, online it happened. I, I happened upon something and I believe it was on a sidebar mm -hmm. and they were offering a, uh, uh, a seminar on moving to France. Mm -hmm. And so I signed up for it and listened to the seminar. And I thought, you know, I need to do this. And so I made an appointment with Richard mm -hmm. and um, talked with him. And by the end of it, I thought, yep, this is what I need to do. And I signed up, bought the whole package. Mm -hmm. As as I said, I bought the extra six months of personal information if I needed it. And I did need it. So I was very thankful to have it. And um Again, I just, they took care of everything that I needed. They anticipated what could go wrong and they had already had services in place, in place to take care of it. Brilliant. That's so good to hear. And I'm so glad you've had a, such a positive experience with the team as well, because they really do, like you said, they really do care. And I think most of our clients really feel that from literally the first phone call with Richard. Exactly. They're doing it because you want to help. Yes. That's great. And um, do you have any words of wisdom uh, for anyone looking to start the process themselves? Uh, just make sure that you have uh, this service, HCB, in your pocket. Mm -hmm. With that, you can do anything. You can go anywhere. You can uh, buy a rich house. You can buy a poor house. You can buy something. Uh, for instance, when I typed in on this French property site, what I wanted, I wanted a stone or a tile floor because I wanted a fireplace that worked and I didn't want to wor have to worry about sparks coming out of the fireplace, hitting the floor and starting the house on fire. Yeah. So it had to have that kind of floor and it had to have a garden. The mm -hmm. rest of it, I didn't care about. I didn't care about how many bedrooms. I didn't care um, how pretty it was as long as the roof didn't leak. It had a garden spot and it had a stoner tile floor. I was happy. And my house needs a lot of work, mm -hmm. but I was able to purchase mm -hmm. my house, which is three stories. Mm -hmm. It has um, a garage and a workshop and a huge, huge 600 square meter garden uh, for 23,000 euros. There is no way in hell, pardon my French, that I could have done <laughs> that in America. That's no way. amazing. Yeah, that is okay. Mm -hmm. So you can buy a castle, you can buy what I have. Yeah. And be happy because yeah. it is it's yours. Mm. It's but it's finding your spot, isn't it? And I think the really interesting point you said about being flexible. The certain yes. things that are non-negotiables. And I think as long as you don't have too many of those, you can basically mold everything else, right? Yeah. And if not, you can find someone who can take care of it for you. Sure. Although I will caution you in France, you cannot hire someone who is not licensed to do what work it is that you need done, mm -hmm. because otherwise you and they are going to pay up mm -hmm. the wazoo for that. So <laughs> Absolutely. make sure Absolutely. you hire only licensed contractors or workmen. Very wise words, very wise words. And is there anything that you would do? I know hindsight's a wonderful thing. Is there anything that you would do differently if you were to do it again? Absolutely not. No. I just wished I would have done it sooner. Ah, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good way to be. Like you said, no, no regrets. Just do it, do it and move on and just do it sooner. Exactly. So anybody, no regrets. Anybody who's on the kind of cusp of, or oh, should I, shouldn't I? It's an awful long way to go from home. Am I going to be able to settle there? Is it going to be okay? You'd say just go for it. Absolutely. As long as you're friendly, always look at people in the eye and say hello or bonjour, yes. as they yeah. say here. Mm -hmm. As long as you do that, people will open up to you and help you. They will slowly talk to you. They will, I'm as far as I know, I'm the only American in the village. Okay. There are a lot of Brits, yeah. but I'm the only American. So mm -hmm. I'm sure when I first moved here alone, people thought I was crazy. <laughs> but now they know I'm not. Yes. So, <laughs> but no, just jump. Yeah, just do it. Just jump. Yes. It. 
That is brilliant. Thank you so much, Carolyn, for your time. I really appreciated it today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to hear more from French Connections HCB, like I said before, you can like uh, and subscribe to the channel, which would be great, or get in touch at frenchconnectionshcb.com.